Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III is a senior pastor of the historic Mount Zion Baptist Church of Nashville, Tennessee. He was born in Shreveport, Louisiana to Deacon Joseph and Mrs. Rosa Walker. Bishop Walker received a Bachelor of Arts degree from Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, a Master of Divinity degree from Vanderbilt University, and a Doctor of Ministry degree from Princeton Theological Seminary. He holds two honorary doctorates from Meharry Medical College and Southern University, respectively. He currently serves on the Board of Directors for Meharry Medical College and Citizen Savings Bank. In October 2016, he was appointed by Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam to serve as Chairman of the Board of Trustees for the Tennessee State University. He is also a member of Omega Psi Phi fraternity and the Kappa Kappa Psi Band fraternity. Bishop Walker currently serves as the International Presiding Bishop in the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship International. In July 2013, he was chosen to succeed the founding International Presiding Bishop Paul S. Morton Sr. In 1992, at the age of 24, Bishop Walker began his pastorate at Mount Zion with 175 members. Presently, the ministry has grown to over 30,000 and continues to grow at a phenomenal rate of over 2,000 souls per year. Under his leadership, Mount Zion has expanded beyond its original location on historic Jefferson Street to eight weekly services in three physical locations and also includes a worldwide virtual church location www.mountzionanywhere.org which ministers to millions around the world as well as a weekly broadcast on BET that reaches over 25 million viewers worldwide. In 2017, the City Council approved the naming of the bridge in Nashville to be called the Bishop Joseph Walker III Overpass, making Bishop Walker the only living pastor to have such an honor. His inspiring messages make him a sought-after university commencement speaker. Bishop Walker is a regular guest on the Ricky Smiley Radio Show, as well as a host for other nationally syndicated radio shows that reach millions across the United States. He also has been a guest on CNN, the CBS Morning News, The Roland Martin Show, and authors a monthly op-ed in the Tennessean Tribune entitled Reset. He is married to the former Dr. Stephanie M. Hale, who is an assistant professor of pediatrics and neonatology at Vanderbilt University. Both agree that their most joyous accomplishments to date has been the birth of their daughter, Giovanni Willow, who was born in May 2012, and their son, Joseph Warren Walker IV, born February 2018. For everyone would stand to your feet now and receive Bishop Joseph Walker III. Well, somebody who loves the Lord, give God praise all over this place tonight. Come on, where are the Jesus people tonight? Come on, if you love him with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind. Listen, before you have your seat, I want to take a moment Many are called, but few are chosen. I believe that God gives generational leaders voices that he raises up at specific times to do things that others are fearful to do. This man of God who leads this ministry, who leads this great move, is one of God's anointed vessels. I think we should honor and thank God for my friend, Apostle. Stephen Davis. Come on, let's honor him. Come on, let's honor him. We honor his wife. We thank God for you, woman of God. We too. You may be seated today, and I'm grateful to God. Of course, I'm delighted to be here. And of course, good to see that anointed uh, uh, Joanne Rosario. She is a blessing. I'm telling you, every time she sings, I thank God for her. Bring you greetings from Nashville, Tennessee, and of course, it's just great to be here uh, in Birmingham to be with you on tonight. I am just so excited. Your pastor is such an inspirational man of God, such a man of integrity, and a man who does ministry out of the box. That's the kind of folks I'm attracted to, people that do it out of the box. Amen. Grace to God for you. I really do. 
team is with us tonight, I thank God for Andre Anderson and of course Gerald Scott. Our team is with us tonight. We thank God for these gentlemen who share. Thank you so much for receiving them. I bought one of our books tonight. This is our 12th book. It just came out literally a month ago and God has given a great favor. Uh, we'll be sharing next week um, on Sister Circle and God is opening up doors for us to share this on the Doctor's Show on CBS and and um, Oprah's looking at it as well. We're excited about what God is doing with this one because it's called Restored at the Root. It really is about getting to the source of social, emotional, and spiritual struggle. When you think about all the things that we see happening in culture today and how people are not dealing with things that are deep down within, we're manifesting fruit that's not giving God glory because we don't want to deal with the stuff at the root. And so, this book is really about helping you understand how to deal with the root. There was a man in Mark 5. Jesus encounters him and asks him a question that nobody else was willing to ask him. He was among the tombs. Jesus said to him, what is your name? His response was, we are legion. We are many. His deliverance was only going to take place when some root work took place. Because you can get deliverance in one area and leave a whole lot of other stuff still down inside. This book is about getting it all out. Somebody shout, I got to get it all out. I got to get it all out. So I want you to get it. I will be happy to sign it for you. And of course, I want to stay connected to you. If you're on social media, make sure you follow us. My name, Joseph Walker 3. I love to bless you. I just send out blessings to people all the time. And I really appreciate you so much for doing that. There is a word tonight. Who came to receive from God tonight? Come on, who came to receive? Isaiah 54, Isaiah 54 tonight, there was a word that God wants to speak into our lives, Isaiah 54. Father, we are ready to receive what you have for our lives. God, we pray tonight, we pray tonight, God, that your word will shift us, your word will redirect us, move us, empower and encourage us to be all you've called us to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Somebody say amen. Here is the word of the Lord tonight. It is in Isaiah 54. Single barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing. Cry aloud. You who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife or the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left. And your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. I want you to just shout these words. It's my season, it's my season. for more. Oh. God bless you today. God is a God of dispensations. He moves in seasons and times and often when God is moving, situations may not appear ideal in our lives. When I say God is a God of dispensations, he moves in seasons and times that he often moves when things are in proper alignment, in proper order. God reveals himself this way in dispensations. In the Old Testament, we are clearly aware that God revealed himself as the God who was above us. That's why in the Old Testament, they would look to the hills and would come at their help because their help came from God. And then after that, God then comes and reveals himself in another dispensation because when Jesus comes, the scripture says, when the fullness of time had come, God sends forth his son made of a woman. Another dispensation, right? It is there where the Lord calls himself through his son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, meaning God is now with us. Jesus walks the earth and performs miracles and does great wonders. But then the Bible declares that in John 14, he gives the declaration that he's about to get out of here. And of course, Jesus reminds them that there was one who is coming, but he cannot come until I leave. He is introducing another dispensation and therefore God who started above us and God who revealed himself as with us. Now in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, he comes to get in us. God
God has always moved like that and he moves in dispensations and God, God always knows what time things need to happen in our lives and there are certain triggers and those triggers are literally spawned by our levels of preparation. Let's be very clear uh, tonight. I believe that it is God's desire for us to move outside of the realm of living our lives based upon a variety of things that will never really manifest. God wants us to live in the sphere of what he promises us and he wants us to live in the sphere of knowing that whatever he promises us it is going to come to pass in other words God's word declares to us and watch this that he has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly that God's desire for us is to have the abundant life and to have that life in a season where we can appreciate it and a season where we are prepared to receive what God is about to do in other words God will not bring you into a dispensation or a season that you're not prepared to handle <laughs> you get this in a minute you're praying for something and you're believing God for it and you're wondering why it is held up. It is because there were things that God needs to get out of you, things that God needs to reveal to you in order for that thing to come to pass because God doesn't want you to miscarry a moment. You see, people of God, this is the season where God wants to bring a total overhaul in your life. God is not just trying to give you a blessing on layaway. God is trying to bring you into a place where you can actually receive the totality and the weight of glory that he wants to bring into your life. And so what you and I must understand now is that this is a moment where God says, I need you to start making preparations because you are about to move into a season called more let, let me speak it over somebody's life that more is on its way to your house more is on its way to your church more is on its way to your business more is on its way to your pocketbook i speak it over your life today that your years and days of lack are over that god is about to blow somebody's mind i need somebody to shout i need more let me help you understand this. And so, more, more is assigned to you. I want you to get more is assigned to you. And it is interesting now because what I want you to hear today is an interesting text from the prophet Isaiah. Now, you must understand his audience. The prophet Isaiah uh, is speaking to a people who have been displaced, the people who are disillusioned by being mistreated. It is interesting because it is during the time of the exile. You know Israel, they have been displaced. As a matter of fact, their captors have mocked them. The people who have oppressed them are now uh, looking at them and they're mocking them. It is recorded by the psalmist when they look at them by the riverbanks and say, sing us one of those songs y'all been singing over in Zion. And they then lament, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? These people have been despondent and broken. Everything that they've treasured has been taken from them. But God gives them a word that you are about to come back to a place of restoration. Okay, you look at this. Regardless of what has happened to you, God is about to bring things back in line in your life. Oh, I come today to talk to somebody because I know you've had some brokenness. I know you've had some disappointment. I know you've been disillusioned, but I need you to start getting ready because things are aligning for a reason now. And God is about to bring you back into a season of more. Listen. So it is. It is preparatory, Apostle. It is necessary for the people of God to wrap their mind around this. That before God brings you into this, watch this. We have to be clear about some things. And so Isaiah 53 is critical in understanding Isaiah 54. Because it is in Isaiah 53 that he wants them to understand you have to be clear about your theology. Watch this now. You got to be clear about your understanding of who God really is because he is the God who was and is and is to come. And Isaiah is giving us a prophecy of the Messiah because the messianic work of the soteriological work of Christ would eventually come. He would be the savior that would bring you out. And so Isaiah is telling you that what you must understand now is that there is a Messiah coming and I need you to be clear when you come out how you got out. So... Isaiah 53 raises the question, whose report will you believe? 
We gotta be clear on this question because God is not gonna bring you out until you're clear about how you got out. You gotta be clear that it's not my money, it's not my family, it's not my influence, but in this season, it's nobody else but God. Who support? Who support what you believe? And so in Isaiah 54, <laughs> I want you to hear this, it is, it is there. Here you are, you are, you're, 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 you're on the way out. You're not there yet, but you, you know you close. Because the intensity of your attack is confirmation of how close you are. I need you to look at somebody and tell them I'm real close. Based on all the hell I've been dealing with, baby, I can feel it. I feel like at any moment I'm going to get the biggest breakthrough in my life. Let me show it to you. Watch it. Let me show it to you. And so what he says then to the despondent, broken, disillusioned people, who have been overwhelmed by their oppressors and who are wondering when God is going to do it. He gives them a word that pierces through the pages of biblical antiquity and speaks to us today. And that word declares these words, sing, O barren one, you who have not born you who have labored have not labored with child i need you to know more will be the children of the barren wife than that of the married woman i want somebody to hear this because what i want to do is give you some instructions tonight i want to help you understand that your next season requires a new song Look at somebody tell them your next season requires a new song. You can't keep singing the old song you've been singing where God is about to take you. You can't keep lamenting over what happened to you. This is a moment now you're going to have to change your tune because what God is about to do in your life will not be about them. It's going to be about him. So what I need you to do is shift your song and start singing of the goodness of God. Start giving God glory on what God is about to do. Sing, oh barren one. See your song your song is deeper than the juxtapositioning of sharp notes and flat notes on a keyboard your song points to your faith all throughout the word of the lord whenever people sung a song it was an indicator of a shift wait a minute <laughs> when moses and the children of israel come out of egypt and they come to the river and god delivers them to the red sea in chapter 15, before they can even move beyond that moment, Miriam and the women begin to sing a song because it represents a new dispensation or a ship. Paul and Silas were in a jail cell and before they even came out of the jail cell, the Bible said they prayed and sang touch your neighbor and tell them this song is for what God is about to do this shout is for what God is getting ready to I wish I had somebody here who could open up your wait a minute see there's some of you there's some of you that don't get it yet you don't get it yet because you, you need to hear the instructions. The instructions are to live out loud. The instructions are, oh, barren one, broken one, disillusioned one, one who's been treated unfairly. The instructions for you tonight is this, is to sing loud. You see, in this season, this is not the time to be cute. This ain't the time for you to sit back with your mouth closed because a closed mouth don't get fed. I wish I had two or three crazy praises tonight that when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done, woo, 
touch your neighbor. Tell him, I hope you know who you sat next to tonight. Tell him, you on a praising pew. You on a pew of people that expecting God to do. So what I want you to do is I want you to learn how to receive this word. Watch it. He says, now that you sing, you are the antithesis of your current situation. <laughs> you are barren. It is not happening seemingly for you, but you are the antithesis. You are looking like the contrary to what your situation is. <laughs> because you have been prophetically tipped off. <laughs> that being barren will not be the end of your story. Your current situation will not be your final destination. See, based on what you go through, you won't have to labor for this one. <laughs> you don't realize what you've been carrying. Some people around you don't realize what you've been carrying. That's why they could blatantly treat you the way they did because they don't realize what you've been carrying. I'm trying to help. See, this is how God is reminding them I'm a God of covenant. And so because I'm a God of covenant, covenant is what shifts you. I, I want you to get this. Watch it. See, barrenness never meant you had a lack of capacity. It was only an indication that there was an issue with your productivity. Your barren years were not an indication you were not capable of bringing forth new things. It was only an indicator that something was blocking what you were designed to give birth to. So all God had to do was move the blockage. Some of you, it messed your mind up because you didn't understand that season God took you to. But all God was doing was removing the blockage, opening up your birth canal so you can birth stuff you never birthed in your life before. And because, because you learned to withstand the test and the trials and the barrenness, you were criticized, you were talked about. <laughs> you were ridiculed, but you didn't come down to that level. You could have come down to that level, but you kept your head up. You knew one day it was gonna happen. You knew you were carrying something people did not understand, nor did they appreciate. And let me tell you, God says, what I need you to understand, I need you to get ready because I'm getting ready to do a switch. I need you to look at your neighbor, tell him God's getting ready to switch things up. I don't, I don't know who this is for. I don't know who this is for, but I want you to really hear what I'm getting ready to say to you. Israel, you are the barren one. You have not born. You have been broken. You have been talked about and ridiculed and scorned and people have walked over you and thought there was nothing to you because you have not produced to the level to which they expected you to produce. And you have lived your life comparatively, not intentionally, but you could not help it because you have seen the married wife. You have seen others <laughs> walk into things and you say they're doing it because they dotted every I and crossed every T. And so therefore you have lived your life wondering what's wrong with me and when is my time going to come? But what God says is that more will be the children of the barren. Barrenness in a patriarchal society was a scarlet letter. It was a difficult time because to be barren would really put, a, put, put something on you that people could not stand because if you were barren, you were seen as useless and you had no purpose. But yet God says, I want you to know what I'm getting ready to do. I am getting ready to give the barren one more than the one that seemingly 
has it all together. You're going to get it in a minute. There will be no natural explanation for her fruitfulness. It will be a gynecological phenomenon. I come to prophesy over your life that what's about to hit your house, there will be no natural explanation for it. People will look at you and say, how did somebody with that amount of money end up in that kind of blessing? And all you will be able to say is, I wish I had somebody here who could give God glory. somebody something crazy is about to hit your house tell them an insane blessing is about to jump up on your house and you're out there I know I know what you're thinking you're out there thinking, but you don't know how much time I lost. I know, I know you're here. You're out there saying, but you don't realize how much time I wasted, how much time this cost me. How can somebody like me walk into this season of more? What your struggle is, you're trying to figure out, do you have enough time to recover? After the trauma, after being broken, after what they did to you, do you have enough time to recover? I come to tell you, it doesn't matter how old you are. You're never too old for what God is about to release in your life. Did anybody ever tell you Mark Twain was 40 years old? Mark Twain was 40 years old when he wrote The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Rosa Parks was 42 years old when she sat on that bus, right? Henry Ford was 45 when he designed the Model T. Leonardo da Vinci was 51 when he drew the Mona Lisa. Dr. Seuss was 54 when he wrote The Cat in the Hat. Do you know that Colonel Sanders was 61 when he founded KFC? Do you know Nelson Mandela was 76 when he became president of South Africa? Do you know Abraham was 99? Sarah was 89. Should have been on their way to the gerontologist, but God sent them by the gynecologist because it doesn't matter how old you are, when the hand of God is on your life. What I want to tell you, I'm giving you instructions now. Instructions. Enlarge the place of your tent now. Now that you know you're about to come into it. What this is going to require for you, for your church, for your business, for your life, is infrastructural stability. You can't be raggedy and expect this to hit your house. That's why God got all the raggedy stuff from around you now. That's why God released all the trifling stuff from around you. Because you didn't know why God was doing it. Because God was aligning things for this dispensation. So enlarge. Stretch out your curtains. Expand. Because you're getting ready to break forth on the right hand and on the left hand. See, this is the season where God says, I need you to get ready to be stretched. I need you to look at somebody and say, God is about to stretch you. Some of you already feel this in the spirit. Some of you already feel it because I know what you're saying. 
God, you're stretching me beyond places where I'm comfortable. God's showing you stuff you ain't got the money for. But let me tell you something. See, if you got the money for it, it ain't God. It's you. Because God will always show you stuff that's bigger than your budget, bigger than your bank account. But if it's God's will, it's God's bill. Stretch me till I walk right. Stretch me till I talk right. Stretch me till I live right. Stretch me till I give right. Watch it. Expand me. Because God says, what I need you to do is, I need you to develop a space for me to drop what I'm about to drop in your life. Because I am not in the business of wasting oil. I don't waste resources. So I need you to have the capacity. I need you to surround yourself with people that get it. I need you to stop dummying down your vision to accommodate people that can't handle it. Expand yourself. Stop making apologies for thinking big. Stop apologizing because see God is shifting you. There was a moment you'd be walking around asking Lord, the Lord for the car, but now you're asking God for the dealership. You asking God for a house, I'm asking for the subdivision. Anybody here thinking big? Anybody here, your mindset is expanding that you like, Lord, whatever you gonna do in my life, I'm ready. When you, when you, when you expand me, strengthen my stakes. Because the bigger my tent, the deeper my stakes. See, your stakes represent stability. <laughs> Where God's taking you, you can't be shallow. It's going to take a deeper, deeper level of prayer now. It's going to be a deeper level of warfare now. You got to get deeper in the word for where God, because you got to be able to hold what God is about to bring in your life. And the Bible says, your descendants will inherit because you're going to break forth on the right and on the left. You're going to get this in a minute. Watch this. You see, when God blesses you, it is going to be the season of territorial takeover. I don't know who I'm talking to. You are about to take territory. Okay. But what you have to know in this season is that when God does it, you have to think generationally. you into the season of more you will be the first in your bloodline to get this right you won't come into this wealth and the first thing you think about is a Cadillac and cable no you will understand this is the principle by which your Jewish brothers and sisters live their life. Have you ever noticed that your Jewish brothers and sisters, when they build businesses, they name them Bernstein and Sons? Have you ever noticed when you enter into their neighborhoods, how the streets change? Sidewalks are there. They have their own schools, kosher grocery stores. Have you ever noticed how their temples are paid for? Have you ever noticed how they own businesses in private? You don't really know what they own until you're at the table. And you start saying names you can't pronounce. 
Because in this season, you're going to have to lay low enough until God expose you at the right time. Some folk ain't going to know what you owe until they get to the table. And you ain't got to explain yourself to people who will never get to the table. Your, your descendants will inherit the desolate places. What are the desolate places? In every city in America, the desolate places are looking at you. They are being gentrified by people who are coming in and convincing people to sell their inheritance. And the people who grew up in that place can't afford to live there anymore because somebody else came in and inherited the desolate places. But when you come into this wealth, your children's children are going to have something to show for it because you're going to send a blessing down through your bloodline that a good man and a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children i have come to prophesy over your life tonight to declare that god is about to bring you into a season of generational blessing because god can trust you to handle it and when it comes in your hand everything connected to you is about to receive it together and God is about to bring you into a season of more that you're going to be such a steward of what God has blessed you with that eyes have not seen ears have not heard nor has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has in store for your life God told me to help you prophesy tonight three words over your life three words over your ministry three words over your family the Struggle is over. I need somebody to declare struggle is Can you give God glory? Can you give God glory? I need you to do something tonight. I need you to do something tonight. I need you to grab a person by the left hand and the right hand. I need you to squeeze that hand like you're about to squeeze it off. I told you that God was giving them a word when they were about to come out. And God told me that while I was preaching this word, some of you are on your way into the greatest season of your life. I need you to shake that hand. Tell that neighbor everything that happened to you. The devil messed with the wrong person. The devil messed with the wrong somebody. Tell them because when I release your hand, we're getting ready to walk into our season of abundance on the count of three. To walk in your season. One, two, three. Hey, hey, hey. It's gonna happen. 
how it's going to happen. But I wake up every day with a spirit of expectation that an unusual, crazy blessing is going to slap me upside the head. I got some stuff I need God to do. And I got sense enough to know God is not going to let my season of struggle be greater than my season of blessing. I need everybody who said and looked at you and said, you're barren. But it ain't going to happen for you. Why isn't it happening for you? They laughed at you, took advantage of you, misused you, said it was over for you. <laughs> but guess who's about to get the last laugh? Lay your hand on that neighbor and just tell them welcome to this new season. I, I haven't, I haven't been asked to do this, but I feel the anointing of God leading me to do this because we got to break this off of our mind and break this struggle off of our family, off our bloodline. Some of you are about to walk into something. <sighs> You're about to walk into something. I don't even know you have the capacity to even comprehend. But what I have learned to do, I have learned to sow at my level of expectation. I don't play with this. I don't play with, I sow at my level of expectation tonight. What, I, what I'm going to do with your permission, apostle, tonight I believe that there's been a shift in this place who am I talking to I want to talk to every pastor business leader every true seed sower tonight I told you God was going to stretch you didn't I then I tell you God was going to stretch you but guess what I want you to do I want as, I want as many of you I'm only gonna give two categories and whatever you give after that is fine, but I want you to hear me. Every pastor, every business owner, every leader, I want you tonight to stretch tonight. I want you to get a seed in your hand of $100 for this new seed, this new season you have in your life. Now, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. I want you to get as close as you can. The second seed I'm gonna ask for is the best you can based on where God is about to take you. That means that everybody in this place tonight can get a seed in your hand. I believe tonight there is a shift in this atmosphere and I believe the struggle is over. What I wanna do is I'm going to pray. I'm gonna pray a big blessing over your business, over your church, over your family. And I want you, wherever you're on the balcony, on the floor I want you to run down here and lay it at this altar and I want you to declare those words struggle is over so God I thank you and I thank you for releasing this word under the anointing shifting us into a new season thank you that you're doing it for the barren one that God there will be no natural explanation for what's about to hit our house and we declare now that we're going to another dimension another dispensation of glory and we give your name the praise that it's already done bless it that will far exceed anything we have ever experienced in our life. I pray now, God, that every weight and burden upon every leader will be removed. And I thank you now that you are doing it by your power. In Jesus' name, we declare and decree it is already done. Right now, every leader, every person who's got that seed in your hand, I want you to move quickly. I just want you to bring it and lay it at this altar. That's all. I want you to do it now. Come, come, come quickly. Don't let nobody walk over you. You do it. You do it. You do it. Come on. All is over for you. Yes. The struggle's over. Yeah. The struggle is over. Big stuff. Big stuff. For you. Big stuff. The struggle is over. Yeah. Big the struggle is over for you. Take the straw. 